Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire. In a supplementary charge sheet filed against Goldfish Ark, Fatima, the police claim that she's told them that Sita Ramya Churi, the General Secretary of the Communist Party, Marxist, was one of a handful of people who, according to her plan, sought to provoke and mobilize the crowd into rioting. The police also claim that Gulfisha Fatima has told them that Sita Ramya Churi also tried to mislead Muslims against the Citizenship Amendment Act as well as the National Register of Citizens. With me to talk about these allegations and to respond to them is Sita Ram Yachuri himself. Mr. Yachuri, as I said in the introduction, the police claim that Gulfisha Fatima in her deposition to them has said that you were one of many people who, according to a plan, sought to provoke and mobilize the crowd into rioting. How do you respond to that allegation? It is an absolutely, absolute fabrication. There is no question of rioting. No question of provoking anybody into any action. All these were peaceful protests all across the country. I have travelled, in fact, to every place in the country saying that this CAA is anti-constitutional. And it is our job and I think it's my right, not only my right, my duty to defend the Indian constitution. So, and these were all peaceful protests. But at Jafrabad specifically, did you in any way seek to provoke or mobilise the crowd? into what could be interpreted as rioting? Of course not. It is ridiculous. When, on what basis are these uh, charges being hurled? And this is the whole thing. They are orchestrating this whole issue of they are supposed to be investigating the communal violence in Delhi. 53 people died. Is there any charge sheet on any of these murders? I'll come to that in a moment's time because I think it's an important subject to talk about. But let's for a moment stick to the allegations made about you so that you can... They are absolutely preposterous. Let me quote what the police claim Gulfisha Fatima has said to them. In garbled English, they say she said you were one of the people who filled the feeling of discontent in the community by calling CAA, NRC, anti-Muslim. That is where it is wrong. And for, first of all, garbled language, unsigned, this is what the police claims, that being the apart, set that apart. The question is that I've been mobilizing, and I don't think I'm guilty of it. I've been mobilizing the Indian people against the CIA, saying this is anti-Indian constitution. And it's my appeal was to everybody, and it still is to everybody, saying that this is anti-Indian constitution, and therefore it's not acceptable. So if I understand you correctly, on this particular point, you don't really disagree with what Gulfisha allegedly told the police. You were mobilizing people against the Citizenship Amendment Act. Yep. You were mobilizing them against the National Register of Citizens. Peacefully. And I think it is, as I told you, it's not only my right, but it's my duty to defend the Indian constitution. And I shall do it. And secondly, there is nothing wrong in telling Muslims that you believe the CAA or the NRC is anti-Muslim. That is wrong. I am telling everybody, a Muslim, a Hindu, a Christian, an atheist, that this is anti-Indian anti constitution. You are telling everyone that? Yes. Not just Muslims? Not just Muslims. And there is nothing wrong, were you even only telling Muslims? There is nothing wrong in that? No, I am telling everybody, including, I mean, whatever be the religious denomination, the caste denomination, I mean, whatever be, every Indian citizen, I am appealing to them, saying that this is anti-Indian constitution. So, to sum up what we have so far established, it is a pure fabrication to claim that you were mobilizing and provoking people to write whether you were doing it according to a plan or not. It's just a pure fabrication. Absolutely. Either way. It's a preposterous charge. But there is truth in the claim that you were telling people that the CAA and the NRC is against the constitution. You were telling everyone in the country, right. including Muslims. But had you only been telling Muslims, that still would not be a crime. No, no, but the, that, that is up to the police to say what they want to say. But any Indian citizen, period, that is my appeal. My appeal is to every Indian citizen. And it is your right to tell Indian citizens that you view the CAA and the NRC as anti-constitutional. Absolutely. And this constitution gives me the right and it's, it's my duty also. The police go one step further. In that supplementary charge sheet, they say that the accused, not you, the accused, were poisoning the minds of common people. But then when the police also allege that you were influencing the accused, doesn't it mean that at one remove, you too are guilty 
in their eyes of poisoning the minds of common people. That is it. That is where this orchestration entirely comes in. They are orchestrating all these things with the absolute fabricated preposterous charges. Now you tell me, this Miss Fatima, unless I see her, maybe I would be able to recognize her. Otherwise, I have no idea. You've never met Gulfisha Fatima? I can't say whether I met her or not. There were lots of people there. If she was one of them, I, I mean, that's perfectly a bit possible. Let's huh. leave meeting aside. You don't know her. I don't know her. Personally, I have no contact with her at all. If she were to walk into the room at this moment, would you recognize her? I doubt it. I doubt it. So honestly. you cannot put a face to the name? No. Right now, I can't. You may have met her in a crowd, but if you did, you do it. You did it unknowingly. Yeah, I mean, like everybody else. So you have no idea who she is, actually? But I, I've been, you see, unfortunately, these young people who are being picked up, on what basis, on what charges, and what they have written, and what they have not signed, and what is the garbled language. I mean, this whole thing appears to be a complete fabrication. The police say that you were provoking people against the CA and the NRC, and that you were mobilizing them to riot because you wanted to tarnish India's image at a time when President Trump was visiting the country because you knew India would be at the center of the world's attention. If at all, I was there in Jafrabad. I'll have to check, but that is much, much before Uber Trump came to India. It was much before all these things happened. Those were at the days when the mobilization against the CIA and NRC was going on all over the place. You said two very interesting things. One, if at all you were ever in Jafrabad, which suggests that you may never have been in Jafrabad. There was a site near Jafrabad. Where you were? Where I would have, I definitely have gone. But not Jaf address the crowd. But not Jafrabad itself. I, I mean, I don't know how that area is located to know whether where is. Uh, I don't but you're not it. sure. I don't, I'm not sure. And secondly, but and secondly, if you did go to Jafrabad or this site near Jafrabad, it would have been well before Trump came to India. To secondly, and thirdly, whether I went or not, how is it relevant? It is my right to say that this is anti-Indian constitution. And my duty to protect the Indian constitution. And you have a right to say it even when Trump is in India. Yeah, yeah, why not? I mean, I do. But just so that people have an answer to this question that could be lurking in their mind, do you have any idea when you went either to Jafrabad or to this site? No, Jafrabad? I definitely went to the sites. But any idea when? At, I'll have to check my diary and, and, and I'll tell you if you want. But I mean, I'm sure it's, it's recorded. And it's an open public thing. And you're, and you're equally sure it was well before Trump came? Of course. Trump came 24th, 25th, 26th, February. February. You would therefore have gone well before that. Well before that. Now, let me come back to what the police claim. In their charge sheet, they say, and I'm quoting them, the disclosure statement has been truthfully recorded as narrated by the accused person. Do you believe that or do you disbelieve it? Why is it not signed then? Tell me. What does that indicate? Why is the language so garbled? These are all well-educated people. And I can't imagine them, I mean, their English to be what, what, what youth is there in that chart sheet. So both the garbled English and the fact it's not signed lead you to believe that this is not a truthfully recorded statement. An absolute fabrication. That's what it's pointing towards. In other words, you're suggesting that words have been put into Gulfisha Fatima's mouth and the police are claiming she said this, she may not have said anything of the sort. At all. If all that was true, where is the signature? Have you had any communication with Gulfisha Fatima after this came into not the public? At all. Not at all. So you have no idea what she says about this? Absolutely. Now, let me put it like this. It's no secret. Hmm? That you are, it's no secret yeah. that you are one of the sharpest, most critical opponents of the Modi government. Mm. Do you think this could be a vendetta? Do you think this is an attempt to either punish you or silence you? Well, it's also a signal to others saying that you better be careful. You better watch out. Anybody dissenting against us, he will be pursued like this. And if they're trying to cow me down, I think they, they are very, very sadly mistaken. And we are a generation that fought the emergency, brought back this democracy. That's why they are there in power. We'll fight this also and restore the Indian constitutional values and order. But you do think they are trying to cow you down? They are attempting to, but they are sadly mistaken. But this is an attempt to intimidate and frighten and scare you? I mean, not only me, everybody else. And I'm only appealing to others, don't be frightened. We'll have to stand up and fight. 
and you also said that they are doing this to you because they want to send a message to everyone else. Yes, it is a signal to others. They are testing waters to see how far they can go. In other words, they are saying if we can do this to Sita Ram Yuchuri, one of the more important politicians in our country, we can do it to you yes. who don't match up to him with great ease. <laughs> exactly. And, and that is that is that every single authoritarian totalitarian regime operates on this principle. Instill fear, instill hatred and the violence that will follow, that is what cements their uh, authority. So this is a deliberate conscious attempt by the government to instill fear yes. and hatred, both. Both and, and my point is that what are they investigating, I want to know. Let's come to that moment, sir. Let me just carry on with you for a moment. Are you at all apprehensive or worried? And I'll tell you why I ask. Many people believe this is a vindictive and vicious government. It is. Are you therefore worried and apprehensive about what could happen to you? No, I mean, if the worry was there, to be honest, Mr. Thapa, I wouldn't be where I am and doing what I'm doing. There is a certain commitment, there are certain values, there are certain principles and that is non-negotiable as far as I am concerned. In other words, the fact that you are General Secretary of the CPM shows and proves you are not scared, you are not full of fear. Exactly. And nobody has been able to calm me down, neither will they. I'll tell you why I asked, because on Sunday, that's just 24 hours ago, Umar Khalid was arrested. Now, he's one of the four or five names mentioned by Gulfisha Fatima. He's been arrested. Are you not worried that the same could happen to you? Well, let them. I mean, I was arrested in an, an emergency. We were arrested a number of times. I was arrested under decoity when the Shah of Iran came here. I was in Tihar for more than a week. So, they, these are all, I mean, I mean, when you are committed, when there are certain values, when you have a certain direction, when you have a certain purpose, a commitment, then yes, this is all part of the whole uh, system. When I began that question and I asked, are you worried that if they can arrest Umar Khalid, they can arrest you, you said, let them. Does that mean you are not going to seek anticipatory bail or any other measure to protect yourself? But where is the situation? I mean, where, where, where is that stage? Today, the police is on record today, after what all happened yesterday and sort of an uproar, the that, no, that uproar they, in the country, they, the are, they are not saying. But the speech they claim Umar Khalid made in Andhra was as innocent and innocuous as the speeches you were making in Delhi or elsewhere in the country. And if Umar Khalid can be arrested as a result, and remember the basis is the same allegation made in the same deposition by the same lady, Gulfisha Fatima, then I you could be arrested. This is the basis on which he has been arrested. If there may be other other uh, factors or other uh, thing, th things on record, I have no idea. But the point is that if this is the way they are going to go about, what is it that they are investigating and what is it they are charging people with? One last question before I come to that, because this is the third time I am avoiding the issue <laughs> yeah. you want to discuss. You therefore are not afraid of being arrested? No, no. Why should we be? Not at all. Do you think they will actually go to that extent of arresting you? Or do you think because you are General Secretary of one of the most important parties in the country, that will protect you? Well, that the position never protects. The question is, what is the general people's support? And that is what is the biggest strength that I have. In other words, they will stop from arresting you because they know that it will have an adverse impact both on people's support and also, I presume, in the media. Yes, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure any right-meaning person is going to stand up to oppose if they do what they're doing. Should. So, you're not apprehensive, you're not worried about yourself? Not at all. If I was, I, as I told you, I wouldn't be where I am. Let's then, at this point, broaden the discussion. Let's come to those issues that I know you're keen to yeah. raise. One of the things that is pretty obvious is that the police are deliberately trying to connect the protests against the Citizenship Amendment Act, the protests against the National Register of Citizens with the Delhi riots. How do you respond to this deliberate strategy of the police? It is a complete orchestration. Because, you see, the Delhi riots, what they call the riots, these are not really riots, it was communal violence. And this communal violence, as I said earlier, I mean, now since we are discussing it, 53 people are officially dead. How many more unofficial, we wouldn't know. 53 people, I mean, what is this? Tell me a single chart sheet on any one of these murders. They were hate speeches that are widely publicized all over the country and the world by a union cabinet minister. 
Anurag Thakur. Anurag Thakur. By, by uh, Mr. Kapil Mishra, leader of the BJP in Delhi. Parvesh Varma. Uh, Parvesh Varma. <laughs> and, you know, and, and these are all viral on the social media. And they're given dates. Till Trump is here, we won't do anything the moment he leaves. And nothing no. has happened against those people. Nothing. So Not you're saying two things, aren't you? One, you're saying that this is not a riot. This was communal violence. And I take it what you're suggesting, it was a sort of, if I could use that word, it's, I don't think it's exaggerated, a pogrom. An attempt to attack a particular community because exactly. of their religion. Would you agree with that? Yeah, that, that's what, that's, that is what the facts show. So you see it as a pogrom yourself? No, no, no. Of course it is. It was targeted. It was targeted violence. Against Muslims. Muslims. And secondly, you're saying that in their investigation of it, the police are not even-handed. They are going after one community, ignoring the fact that a lot of the violence was done by the other. other. Absolutely. Now the point, the point at issue is where is that investigation? What is being done by the police on this, this violence? What about the victims? I mean, this entire thing is being brushed under the carpet and then orchestrating a link with the anti-CAA protests with, these, with this violence. This is a complete orchestration and it is politically being mastered. It is politically being done. It's the Delhi police acting under the Union Home Ministry. In other words, it is happening at the specific direction not just of the Modi government, but you're suggesting the Home Minister Amit Shah. No, but that's where the jurisdiction comes, not Home Minister Amit Shah. Obviously, the government as a whole. But the implementing authority is the Home Ministry. So the decision to deliberately link the protests against the CAA and the NRC with the riots is a deliberate decision of the central government. Yes, it is a deliberate political decision of the government. If that is one element of the police's strategy, the other seems to be the fact that very assiduously, they have gone after and are attempting to prosecute the activists, but they are dragging their feet. In fact, they are doing absolutely nothing when it comes to Kapil Mishra, Anurag Thakur, Parvesh Varma. How do you view this second strategy? Is it designed to protect those close to the government and send out a message that we will accept their misdemeanors in courts because they are on our side, <coughs> we'll attack the others instead? Absolutely. That has been their, their entire philosophy, their entire direction and their entire political di direction on, in every other field. If you defect from being an opposition party leader, join them, then all the charges against you, everything else is, uh, you are protected. But if you are doggedly anti them for, on basis of your principles, you find yourself in jail or you find yourself, you know, uh, prosecuted. One more question. Information and details from these supplementary charge sheets and the alleged depositions made by people like Gulfisha, Fatima and others concerning yourself, concerning Umar Khalid, concerning Yogedra Yadav, concerning Rahul Roy, Jayati Ghosh, all emerged Saturday evening in time for Sunday's front pages. That's just 24 hours before Parliament was going to convene. Yeah. Do you think the timing is deliberate? Of course, of course it is. <laughs> of course, of course it is deliberate. It's also signaled for the parliamentarians. After all, I was in the parliament for a long time. It's a signal to the parliamentarians, you, you better fall in line. Otherwise, watch out. So when you said earlier <clears throat> that they are targeting you to send a message to others, some of the others are sending messages to our MPs. Hmm. Watch out, behave yourselves. You're right. If we can do this to Sita Ram Yachuri, we can do it to you. You're right. You're right. This is sending out a signal. But I'm sure and I'm very confident that very few will buy it. But you're suggesting that it's not just Sita Ram Yachuri they're trying to cow down. They're also trying to cow down and intimidate MPs. I, they have come, any political opposition leader. I, they have got three ways of doing it. Either cow down, instill fear so that no dissent, or buy them up. Like they have done it with toppling of the elected governments, that we have seen a string of them. Or other, otherwise you use both of them. So cow down, buy out, or topple the government. No. These are the three. The three. My last question, you made it clear you're not going to be carved down. You made it clear you're not going to stop doing and saying what you're saying. You also made it clear you're not scared of being arrested. Mm. Correct. Do you propose to do anything about the fact 
that the police have made public a deposition which is not signed, making allegations which are not corroborated or investigated. I think Mr. Chidambaram in his own tweet has pointed out yes. that before these were made public, they should have been investigated, but right. that wasn't done. Do you intend to do anything about this at a legal level? But th that they'll have to do. If they proceed further, then the question of any legal intervention would come. There's no legal step you so can take? Right now, there's none. There's none at all. And in fact, Mr. Riverio, whom all of us respect as a very, very honest, upright uh, police officer, I mean, he has given certain lessons to the Delhi police. Asking but them I, to I, stand I don't, by I don't, their oath of office when they became policemen and investigate fairly and impartially. Correct. And, and that I don't blame them. They are under the influence of the home ministry. But in the eyes of many who may not be analytical, may not be objective, who accepted face value what the papers put out, your reputation has been somewhat smudged by the claim made by this lady that you were in fact instigating and mobilizing people to write. Does it worry you that they've damaged your reputation in some people's eyes? I don't. You see, anybody who knows me, who's seen me work, who heard me, will know that is utter nonsense and a fabrication. That sort of a claim. And all through my political life, I mean, that is something that will just not stick to be, stick on me. So your attitude is to brush this aside Absolutely. and dismiss it? Uh, totally. It is dismissive. You literally flicked it off as if it was a bit of dust <laughs> yes. on your shoulder. Yeah, I, I know it will keep falling back. <laughs> and I have to keep flicking it off, off and off. Over and over again. Sita Ramichuri. I wish you good luck. Thanks. Take care. Thank Stay you. Stay safe. Thank you.